I like to discuss topics related to infrared photography. In this video, I'll share my free color infrared LUT pack. LUTs, or color lookup tables, are used to remap colors and are commonly used for color grading in video. They can also be used for color swapping in infrared images. LUTs can be used in both raw image editors and in video editors. They can also be used to create a profile that both swaps colors and makes setting your white balance easier. I'll cover each of these uses. My color infrared LUT pack is available for free. The download link is in the description. At the end of the video, I'll show you how you can create your own LUTs using Photoshop. Okay, the first thing that you can do with a LUT is you can use it in another program to help you with a color swap. So for example, I'm in Exposure X6, and in this program, there's no channel mapping, there's no other good way to swap colors, but I can use a LUT. But if you don't have Photoshop, then you wouldn't be able to create a LUT, so you can use one of these LUTs to do that. So let's start, I'll go into Basic, and the first thing I'm gonna do is select a profile. You can use the Adobe DNG Profile Editor to create a custom profile for your camera. That's free, and you should download that and create profiles for your camera. So I'll select that, and then once I've got that selected, I I can then set a white balance. It's much easier to set a white balance once I've got that profile. Okay, so I've got my profile set and the white balance set, and now I can come down to the LUT section and I can select a LUT. And you can see I've got three LUTs that I've imported here and are ready to use. I've got my color infrared channel mixer, hue shift, and invert. So you can try each of these. So if I pick that, that's it. Now my colors are swapped and I'm ready to continue my edit. So you can use this LUT in Exposure X6 or any other raw editor that will import LUTs. If you use Adobe Lightroom, then you can use LUTs to really simplify your workflow. I'll start in Adobe Lightroom, and when I pull up this raw image, you can see that the colors are very red, and I need to do a lot of work to fix the white balance and then swap the colors. So by default, I have the Adobe Color Profile, and the first thing that I wanna do is select a custom profile that I created with the Adobe DNG Profile Editor in order to improve my white balance. So I'll select that. You'll notice now that I've selected this profile, I have nice blues in the organic matter in the image, and now my sky is yellow. I could then head over to Photoshop and do my color processing there, but if I want to do it in one step, I can combine this profile with a LUT. And so I'll show you what that looks like. So if I go down to my profile picker and I go down to this channel mixer that I've created, then this takes both the profile that improved my color temperature and it takes the LUT that swaps the colors. And so within Lightroom, in one step, I can select a profile that will both improve my white balance and swap my colors. I'll put a link above and in the description for details on how you can create your own LUT-based profile based on your specific camera model. I've also got this documented on the blog so that you can follow along step-by-step, step. and I've simplified that process even further by creating the LUTs for you so that you don't have to create the LUTs. Next up, let's talk about using these LUTs with infrared video. Here's some video that I've shot with a 590 nanometer converted camera, and I've opened up the clips of this video in DaVinci Resolve. The process will be a little bit different depending on your video editor, but these LUTs should work in, in any video editor such as Adobe Premiere, etc. So in Resolve, I'm going to go over to the color module and I've got my first clip selected here on the left. I'll right click on this node and under LUTs, I will go down to 3D LUT and there's a category that I've created here called infrared, and I've got the three LUTs that I have created. I'll select the channel mixer, and you can see that that already swaps my colors. If I come down to the lower left-hand corner of the screen, I can select the white balance picker, and then I can just double check my white balance by clicking on the cloud. So I can do this with the other clips as well. Here's the second clip. I will right click on it, go to LUTs, 3D LUT, infrared. This time I'll select the hue shift and then I will come down to the white balance picker and I will white balance on the clouds. So this is def definitely a color, different color profile that you're going to see. And then I will come to the third clip, select that, right click, select LUT, 3D LUT, infrared, and then color infrared invert. And now I can do the same thing. I can white balance Got a little bit of cloud here. I can white balance on the clouds in this image. 
Okay, so now I can go back to my editor and we'll scroll back to the beginning. And there we go. So I've, I've basically swapped the colors on my infrared video. You can use the uh, other tools available in your video editor to tweak the exposure and tweak the colors a little bit more. But this gives you a good starting point for how to swap the colors with infrared video. All right, so let's talk about how you can create your own LUTs using Adobe Photoshop. So I've opened up a raw image in Photoshop and that will open up Camera Raw. So the first thing that I want to do is select profile, the profile for this camera that allows me to get a better white balance. Then I can use my color picker and select the clouds. And now I have a good white balance. I've got a good separation. So now I can open this image. All right. So with this image open in Photoshop, the first thing I want to do is create an adjustment layer. The thing about LUTs is LUTs are basically the adjustment layers that have been captured in a file. It's, it's almost like exporting adjustment layers. So any adjustment layers that I add to this image will be part of the LUT. Any manipulation that I make to the image itself will not be part of the LUT, but the adjustment layers will be part of it. So if I go to Channel Mixer, and I've got my Channel Mixer open so I can look at the channels, I'll go to the red channel, and I'll swap this by setting the red value to 0 and the blue value to 100. Then I will come down to the blue channel, and I will set red to 100 and blue to 0. So now I've effectively swapped my colors. So now what I need to do is come over to File, Export, Color Lookup Tables. So now I can put in whatever description I want. So we'll call this Channel Mixer. And for the quality, there's a variety of quality settings. The higher you go, the, the more color lookup values you'll have, but then the larger this file will be. I've tried maximum. I haven't seen a huge difference, but if you're really, really concerned about quality, you can certainly select maximum, but I would recommend high. And then you have a variety of formats. The primary format that we want to look at for creating a LUT is the cube file. Uh, LUTs are like three-dimensional tables, and so that's why it's referred to as a cube. It's three-dimensional. And so we will hit OK. The other thing to know is that in Photoshop, you can actually create an I ICC profile as well. However, I've struggled to get these ICC profiles to work in other programs. The ICC profiles that I've created have worked in Photoshop and they'll they'll replicate the, the color lookup table in Photoshop and swap my colors, but they won't work in other programs. So they won't work in say Capture One, which will use ICC profiles. So I'm still looking for the reason for that or maybe a better solution for creating ICC profiles. But in the meantime, know that you may have troubles if you try to create ICC profiles files this way. So for now, I'll just create a cube file and I'll hit OK. And then I can save that file wherever I like. And then I can use it for uh, any of the methods talked about previously. You're not limited to a color swap. You could actually add more adjustment layers to your LUT. So for example, let's say I wanted to add some contrast to this image and I want that to be sort of a default for all of my infrared images. So I could come down to adjustment layers and add an adjustment layer. There's a variety of ways you could add contrast. You could do contrast levels, curves. I'll select curves. And here I'm going to do the presets and I'll select medium contrast. So that'll add some contrast to my image. So now if I go to edit, export, and color lookup tables, I can export a different LUT that contains both the channel mixer for the color swap and this tone curve for some additional contrast. So you may wish to create multiple LUTs to simplify your workflow in either video or stills in how you want to process. You have the flexibility. You can use the free LUTs that I've made available, which are pretty much focused just on color swapping, or you could make your own LUTs that do color swapping and more. Be sure to check out the link in the description to download my free color infrared LUT pack. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Do you have any topics related to infrared photography that you'd like to see addressed? Leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.